The guitar has been sitting for several days. Actually, it's been hanging for several days. I've had the holes plugged up. This sponge has, uh, you know, it's pretty damp and there's a lot of uh, slots cut into that bag there. That kind of keeps the moisture down in there. As far as I can tell, and I'm just going by eye at this point, it doesn't look like the slot has closed up any. Uh, maybe a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, maybe. But let's see here, we've got the 14 thousandths. It still fits in the slot there. Uh, yeah, it still fits in that slot. So for all intents and purposes, after hanging for several days, I'm gonna say it's probably been about four days with humidity in there, it hasn't changed at all. So I don't think we're gonna waste any more time on the humidity idea. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, fill this slot uh, the best we can, color it, and uh, you know, it, I mean, 14 thousandths isn't very much, so I think we can glue it. I think a, a gap filling glue here will work. I stand before you in this place without one hope or plea. My sin spread out before your face As you look down on me I have no merit on my own No ransom could there be My only hope is that your love In love has covered me You took upon your back a word I've got a fresh razor blade here. I've taped off both sides of the razor blade, just left one sharp spot right in the very middle. And I'm going to use that to scrape this glue that I filled this crack with. I'm going to scrape that flush now with the crack. I bow before you in this place. That feels pretty good. What I think I'm going to do now, see, this crack is a little complicated. It, it, it's, it's kind of feathered under here. I don't know that I can really do much with that. I'm afraid to put too much of that super glue on it and stuff. I'm afraid it's going to run all over the rest of the finish. But I think I'm going to try. Um, I'm going to, uh, this, this part here is kind of jagged. I'm going to get the thin viscosity glue now and just go in this part. From here to here, it's pretty much sealed. There's a little continuation of the fine line crack down through here, and there's a little continuation which is pretty jagged up in here. So I'm just going to take this thin super glue and one of those little tiny uh, droppers and see if we can just run it in this fine crack. Okay, I've got the thin glue here. Now, I'm not gonna try to tape this off because it's too jagged. Actually, some of it's fairly straight, but it's really pretty jagged. I can see the glue sucking down through there already. set me free I bow before you in this place My praise lift up to thee Lift up to thee People who would rather live in mansions People who would rather live alone People who would trade God's promise For the glories to hold There are people who would rather live in splendor And brag about their silver and their gold But I'd rather have a little old cabin by the crack is from right here to All the way to here So it's a long, long crack we're going to let that sit and dry for a while and we'll try scraping some more of that off and see where we're at. Millionaire and live in mansions in bright array. I'd rather do a neighborly deed for a traveler here or a friend in need. I'd rather live 
by the side of the road and help some pilgrim along life's way. of man is passing by help to point some soul to jesus in that city on high every day i want to help scatter roses every night i want my lap to shine abroad with a welcome from a little bay window by the side of the road i'd rather live by the side of the road and try to point souls to their blessed abode than to be a king or a millionaire and live in mansions in bright array. I'd rather do a neighborly deed for a traveler here or a friend in need. I'd rather live by the side of the road than help some pilgrim along life's way. And help some pilgrim along life's way. Very, very smooth. You can't feel it at all now. Where it used to, it was just grab your fingers. It was so jagged. Well, the strings finally arrived for this uh, guitar. Now I'm talking about the 12 string. I don't keep the 12 string in stock all the time. And I decided to make a new saddle. This saddle here is a bone saddle, and it's a pretty decent saddle, but you, I don't know if you can see it, but it wiggles pretty good. There's a lot of play in that. And it even has a little play this way. I've made, and bef, because I put this uh, pickup in here, this under saddle pickup, th that is 35,000. So I reduced the height of this by 35,000. Now this fits in here like it should fit. I mean, it is absolutely a perfect fit. Not hard to press it down, but it absolutely has no wiggle at all and no wiggle this way. I mean, it's perfectly snug in there. Not crazy tight, there, there's a difference between having them too tight, but then again, if you get them just right, then it's not as likely to pull forward and it's not as likely to crack your bridge across here. When you get those bridges that are leaning forwards and you might want to check yours, eventually, eventually it will crack across here and a crack across here. So uh, anyway, this one is fitting perfect. It's just as good as it could possibly fit. I hope the action will be right. Only we won't know that till we string it up. Now we'll uh, go on to this saddle and we'll make a new saddle for this one. Looking at the six string side, it has basically the same problem. It doesn't seem to move uh, horizontally this way, but it, but it does move across this way. And it, so it does, it does tilt. It's got quite a bit of play this way. It's, it, and I say quite a bit. I'm, I'm, I'm being really picky. We're only probably talking five thousandths worth of play or three thousandths worth of play. So that's about the width of a human hair. So anyway, we're going to fix that. All right, I've got the second saddle made, and again, it is an absolute perfect fit. It, it goes in there, not crazy tight, but, but certainly snug enough that it's not going to fall out, and it doesn't wiggle at all, at all. So that's just as good as it gets in my opinion. So let's start stringing this puppy up. It's about time. I'm not going to show the stringing of this because it would just take forever. But I am going to show you, and I've showed this before, I am going to bevel off the ends of these pins. They're completely blunt. And that just, you know, that's just something that the string ball can catch on. So what I do is right across the groove that runs down through here, I literally have the groove facing up and I file right down 
to, to these points and everything, make a little bit of a taper right there on the very tail end of the pin. I'm gonna do that on all these pins. It makes them go in so much easier and hold better. And hopefully you can see a close-up look of a before and after of the pins. This one's got the bevel on it. There's a little bit of a burr of plastic there, but it's a, no, nothing to matter. And this one is blunt on the end here. So this here, the, the, the little ball will slide past that much easier down inside the guitar. And the guitar. That way the little ball will pull up against the top of the guitar like it should, rather than getting caught on the end of this. Well, as suspected, it took a little while to get those strings on this guitar, uh, the 12 strings, that is. And we've got them on there, and I've just checked the, into, uh, the action. And at the 12th fret, we've got 120 on the bass side and 100 on the treble side. I'd like to reduce that down to about, uh, oh, 90 and 80 would be real nice, uh, make it play real easy. That means we're going to need to take off quite a bit off of these saddles. And on this side here, if we want to get it down to 90, so that's 30 thousandths difference. So we need to take 60 thousandths off of this side. And if we got uh, 20 thousandths, so we'd have to take 40 thousandths off of this side. So uh, I'll take this saddle out of here, we'll mark it, and we'll cut her down. We were real successful at getting this exactly where it should be. Checking it on this side, it's right at 90,000. It might be 95, pretty, pretty close. And on this side, we're right at 80. I would say maybe 82 or 3. So it's roughly 90 and 80. And that's pretty darn good. Now we're gonna go on to the six string side and get it set up. In checking the six string side, we're at 100 thousandths on both sides. Could leave it like that, but I'm gonna go ahead and take it about uh, 20 thousandths off of the saddle, which will drop it 10 thousandths here. So we're gonna get it about 90 thousandths here, and we're gonna you know, just take some off of this saddle here. Well, it finally came, the day finally came. <laughs> We got her all strung up. I believe everything's good. I've got her plugged into the 12 string side and I think it sounds just great through the amp. Now I have a cheap amp. It's just a little Gorilla amp. But uh, it sounds real clear. And you can adjust the volume here. By, like If I turn it towards the tail piece, it turns it down. Now it's just the acoustic. And now if I turn it back up here, I can... that sounds great now let's just see what happens when we plug it into the uh, to the six string because I haven't tried that yet and I'm just going to turn the volume down here because I'm sure it's going to make a noise plugging it in so let me uh, switch it over to the six string now and uh, let's see what that sounds like I haven't even tried it yet. Yeah, it sounds clear. And again, you got your volume here. So we've got uh, both of them working with the LR bags pickups. Uh, I think that was the better way to go. Uh, the way this works now is you can actually go ahead and plug both of them in, have them run through your board, and have them EQ'd differently so that the 12 string and the 6 string are EQ'd the way they need to be. And then the sound guy can switch from one to the other, or you can switch from one to the other real easy yourself just by turning the volume up and down. You know, and you can turn because uh, it doesn't seem to cross feed very much, although there is some because there is an internal microphone. And I've noticed that uh, just before I turned the camera back on with just the 12 string uh, plugged in, I was playing the 12 string and then if I switched to the 6 string, I could still hear the 6 string a little bit through the amp, but not too bad. Not, not near as much as you might think. So there, there's the 12 string and it's not plugged in right now and I can hear it through the amp. Uh, but not like the not like the six string. 
there's the six string. It's pretty loud. Hope I'm not overdriving the camera too much. It's got a nice clear sound. I like those pickups. They're great pickups. I think that's about as good as we can do. To recap, we fixed that uh, big crack that was in the back here. Um, I, I think that's it right there. You can see it still. There's a dark line there, but it's, uh, it's all blended into the finish and buffed out so you can barely tell it. And uh, we did fret jobs. We did new saddles. Of course, the pickups. I think I made uh, one new nut over here. I believe I remember making the nut for this. <laughs> I tell you, there's been so many instruments through the shop, I don't hardly remember what I've done on this thing now because it's been sitting in here longer than normal. But anyway, it's up in very good shape. The action's just crazy good. The action's only about 90 thousandths all the way across the board here at the 12th fret. Um, it's really low up here, and uh, I would say it's even quite a bit below my normal 18 thousandths up there. So it plays real easy. So, overall, I think it's a good guitar up in good shape. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Well, do I look frustrated? Because I am. Take a look at this. See how far that's under there? That one goes under there too. The six strings even worse. But both of them are coming loose. I cannot believe it. I thought I was completely finished and ready to pack this thing up and send it out, but I guess because I like stringing and unstringing 18 strings so much on one guitar, I'm going to get to do it at least one more time, probably two or three more times by the time I'm done with this. But we got to take it apart again and uh, take the bridges off and glue them back down. Well, as you can see, I've got the strings out, the saddles out, got the pickups out, so I've taped off the back here where I don't, you know, hopefully we'll not have to worry about marring up the finish. It's, uh, they're loose, but I don't know how loose they are. I'm hoping I can get them off without a fight. It's so sad when you get something done, you think you're finished. Because I don't recall those bridges looking loose when this came in with the strings on it, but they may have just been loose and I just didn't see it. I don't know. I, uh, you know, I could cheat on it and squirt glue under there and hope it holds but that's not generally how I do it. I try to make sure that everything's right under there and put them back on the right way and it's a lot more work but at least I know they'll hold that way. My goodness. It's definitely going under there but doesn't seem to be going real easy. I didn't heat these up first. I maybe should do that. I was trying to take a shortcut, so the problem with heating these up is, is that I don't have a template that I can lay over the top of them to keep from heating up the guitar. Guess we'll just have to improvise. Yeah, try heating it up pretty hot and see if that makes a difference. Now yeah, let's see, see if that made any difference. Doubt it. This is not simple at all. I was afraid we were going to have problems. As luck would have it, it must be holding really tight along this front edge because I can see it going through the holes, obviously. I don't like to get on that front edge if I don't have to. Man, it 
feels tight. What a bummer. See if I can get on under the front. I know the front's not loose, so that's kind of a pain to try to get under there when you know it's not even loose. And it came up pretty clean, all things considered. That didn't really have much tear out, so that's pretty good. Let's see if we can get the other one off without too terribly much damage. Let's see how much damage we did here. Eh, there's some, but not terribly a lot. I, I figured I'd have to fix something, you know. But it's not too bad, really. Might be in the front here. I was pushing pretty hard. Eh, a little bit, but not too bad. All things considered, it could be a lot worse. Be that loose to have the paper go under there by a half inch. You know it's loose, but it's held in the front end. I might have been able to have re-glued it in place and it might have worked. But you never know and I didn't want to send it back and then have it come loose later. If he had lived local I probably would have tried to glue it in place. But because I have to ship it, I want to ship it back and not have to worry about it. little tear out right there but not too bad came out pretty clean off the back of the bridge it was glued pretty well I don't know why it came loose on the back edges but we got them off now we can progress all right we're gonna see how tough it's gonna to be to clean these up That's this single edge razor blade first to see if it'll be a good enough scraper to get the glue and everything down to bare wood and it seems like it might do it and it looks like it runs through here all the way through here all the way through here through so there's some marks in there that I think were in there originally. I don't think I did that. It's pretty good. I'm just looking down at it to see if it's good and flat or if there's any curl or hills or valleys. It looks pretty flat. It's pretty good. I'm going to tooth it up a little bit with the toothing blade here. Yeah, that feels better. It's not so glass slick smooth now. All right, about can. I think I'll just go ahead and wipe them down with acetone. Then I'll set these aside and clean up the top of the guitar. Ordinarily, I clean these with this uh, little chisel, but uh, usually I'm picking off finish and heavy glue. Not so much in this case, so I'm just going to use, I, I need to be real detailed, so I'm going to use this little tooth blade and just work on it and uh, go across the grain in places to cut the glue off and, and expose the wood real good.
a little unusual that most of the glue seemed to stay on the bridge. I don't know why that was. Alright, now I just want to inspect them up close to make sure that that it's it's all wood to wood that there's no finish under there. It, I think he had them pretty much that way, so. That looks pretty good. That one does. I believe this one's okay too. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I'm going to do a little dry run with clamping and make sure everything's going to work that way. And we'll bring you back here in a minute when we're ready to glue them up. Alright, I have a scenario here that I want to try to explain to you because it's more complicated than normal. It's got ladder bracing here and, and they're fairly tall braces. So, you can't really, the, the clamp on the bottom doesn't touch the top of the guitar it hits about right here it hits that brace and so it's really cockeyed if you try to do this without a uh, cleat inside there I, basically what I did was I just cut a block of wood about this big right inside there uh, well as a matter of fact it looks just like this because I got one for the other side so I have this block of wood up underneath there right now I temporarily have it that block of wood held in place with this clamp and this little spacer here. This is my bridge spacer. Once I got my hand in there, I thought, well, you know, I might as well make, you know, uh, hey, while the sun's shining, because you, getting your hand in and out of this now, especially with the little controls here and the holes, is very, very hard to do. And I didn't want to have to go in and out more than I had to. So I'm hoping that I can, you know, keep keep pressure on this clamp and hold that block of wood up there while I remove this, put glue on here and I'll keep holding it with my hand. And uh, maybe I can even find a way to brace it up here. I don't know if I can do that or not. But, but anyway, I'm gonna try to keep that block of wood in place without having to go inside again while I get glue on here and get glue on the bridge. Uh, and uh, then we'll try to clamp it right back down in place. Not a simple proposition on this guitar. It's a tough guitar to work on. Okay, what I'm going to attempt to do, or what I'm going to do, I guess, is I'm gonna put glue on this uh, six string bridge first and uh, spread it around first. Set it aside for the moment and then put glue on the bridge area of the guitar top and then put this in place and hopefully keep that block of wood on the inside without falling down through there, I'm hoping. All right, we've got real good coverage on this. I don't really want a ton of squeeze out here, so I'm spreading it out real thin. Set this aside. And now I will attempt, and, and, it, and I use the word attempt, to try to hold this in place, remove this little block of wood, get glue on here. on there now without it oh wouldn't you know the cloth has to get stuck to the bridge oh my goodness it's always something and now I got to get it lined up really good with the bridge pin holes that are under there little bit of pressure on it to hold the block in place to check these holes and I also have to check the pickup hole to make sure it's open and 
it's not. Well, I accept that block of wood's under there, I guess. Oh, I'm afraid I'll get glued down on that and glue the block of wood in there. Oh my goodness. Hadn't thought of that. Well, I did think of it in the bridge pin holes. I'm trying to keep them pretty clean, but best I can tell. I'm going to clean it off a little bit here, tighten it up a little bit, clean off the squeeze out, and make sure it's lined as good as I think it is. More and more glue squeezing out in the peg holes. I'm trying to clean, keep them clean so I can really check my alignment. They look pretty darn aligned, best I can tell. Really hard to say if it's perfect or not. Okay, I'll put the, put the squeeze to her now if we can, and I say if we can because it is a tough one to work on. Oh my gosh, just barely can get another one in there. That really makes a lot of difference on the squeeze out. You can just see it coming out of there now. And, you know that you're getting a lot better contact. Alright, we'll try the same thing here. Got leather under all the clamps there to keep from marring the bridge. And now I've got them really torqued down tight. Really looks good. I thought I was going to be able to do both sides, but in hindsight here, I think I'd be pressing my luck. So I think I'm probably just going to let this one set for five or six hours anyway before I take the clamps off, and then we'll do the other side. All right, we'll let that hang for a while. We've uh, got the 12 string side ready to go and I'm going to put the glue on this first. I will say that for whatever reason this hole is just a little bigger than this hole and getting my arm through this hole and getting it turned to get that other block of wood inside there was very difficult. I mean really hard. But we got her done and uh, I didn't film that. It's just uh, was enough to keep just to get my hand in there let alone try to film it okay that feels really good it's getting better and better you can start to see good line of squeeze out all the way around Maybe I can get lucky and get this last clamp in there. It's uh, going to be fun. Well, I think we did it. Yeah, clean up the mess. Well, as I believe you can see, I got the clamps off, buffed out the top here, buffed the bridges back out looks pretty darn good you know uh, there's a little bit of you know depression if you will around this edge here where what it did was it kind of emphasized the grain in the top and it just is what it is I, I tried to buff that down a little bit but uh, I think we're gonna have to call that good and before because you can always make a situation worse rather than better and so we'll go with that and uh, we'll string it back up here and see how it sounds a lot of my projects uh, just over the last couple of weeks are what you would call projects without an end. And that certainly holds true for this baby. You know, we've already taken the bridges off, put them back on. We've got it all tuned up and fixed and sounds good. It plays good, everything. 
But then again, under the final inspection, I noticed there is a fine line crack right here. Now this is not actually a crack like in the grain. This is where the two boards were glued together to make the back wide enough. There's a straight line crack there. So I am just going to treat this with my super glue. I have really been doing a lot of the super glue lately and and uh, I've really got it down pretty good with uh, using this uh, eyedropper, which is a very tiny little dropper. And I don't think I'll really need to tape this off. It's going to spread a little bit, of course, but I think I can get it to go right down in the crack of that, uh, of these two boards and uh, I'm steady enough that uh, I can follow that line really good. And of course we'll have to sand and buff out the area when we're done, but I think I can make it work here. Well, it doesn't take much. It goes right down in the crack. That part's not a problem. this stuff would dry faster because it's it's working really well but I'm going to go ahead and spritz it with this if you wait a little while before you spritz it it generally doesn't cloud up and get dark or uh, white like that and it looks like it worked on this I think I'm going to quit looking because every time I look I find one more thing on this guitar. I'm hoping this is the last one. I'm right now sanding with wet or dry uh, 600 and of course I'm using it wet and I'm just trying to clean up the little seam here. It looks good. Well, doesn't need a lot, I don't think. It's going to look real nice. It, you won't even be able to tell it, I don't think. That was 600. Now we'll go with some 1200. Looks pretty good. We'll take it to the buffing wheel and see what it looks like can't even feel the crack now at all. Well I think I feel like that heavyweight fighter, uh, young heavyweight fighter I should say after his first bout. He calls home says mom it was a tough fight but I won. And that's kind of the way I feel about this thing. It's been a tough fight but I think I won. Uh, we, you know we've put deer antler saddles on it, we got uh, the bridges taken off and put back on, we've got the pickups in it, uh, we built a reinforcement around this pickup so that it should be solid like this one is and uh, repaired two cracks one right here on the back and one that was all the way down the back here and they look good I mean you can see them when you look close but overall uh, it's in pretty good shape we worked on the action got the action and intonation real nice on both of them uh, this B string on the uh, six string. The B string was very dull and I found out that the angle didn't go all the way through the nut. The, it stopped about halfway through and, the, and so the string was vibrating within the nut there. So anyway once I straightened that out that cleared that string up so it's nice and clean now. All the strings sound good now so I think I'm gonna quit looking because every time I look a little closer I find something else. <laughs> Oh, it's been a tough one. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.